Hello friends, uh, in the last lecture we studied about addressing nodes, uh, different addressing nodes and uh, how they work and what is the importance of different addressing nodes that uh, we have studied in our last lecture. Uh, today we are going to talk about uh, instruction format, how to decide the format of the instruction. Um, earlier we have uh, seen a simple instruction format uh, where uh, we just uh, assume that four bits will be allocated for opcode and the remaining bits will be allocated for uh, the address field for specifying the address fields but uh, we have also talked about different kind of addressing for uh, addressing modes right so how to allocate these bits i mean uh, i've already told you if we are going to use different kinds of addressing modes then uh, when we are specifying the instruction we need to specify which addressing mode we are going to use so for again uh, for specifying that addressing mode you are going to need few bits right uh, for opcode you need few bits for specifying the address you are going to need few bits uh, so it the uh, so the instruction format varies depends upon these factors okay so in instruction format what are the different factors uh, first factor is instruction length second factor is allocation of bits and uh, then next is variable length instructions now let's see how can we decide what should be the instruction length so this instruction length actually depends upon your uh, processors instruction registers size okay and also your uh, uh, memory size i mean uh, how your memory is divided if your memory is divided into words of uh, let's say uh, 16 bits then your instruction should be mostly 16 bits if uh, let's say your memory has uh, words of only 16 bits okay and your instruction format is of 64 bits then you are going to need different four words to store only one instruction and what happens when you fetch one instruction it uh, your processor only fetches the contents of one location only. so if you want the whole instruction you need to fetch four different um, uh, for different contents for, from four different locations then you will get one instruction so to avoid this kind of uh, chaos what we can do is we can uh, make the instruction length equal to the uh, word word size in your memory okay that way when you fetch the instruction full instructions would be fetched okay Another important factor is while considering instruction length, uh, the bus size. See what happens when the instruction is fetched from your memory to your processor. What happens is from that specified location, the instruction gets copied into bus first, your bus. Okay, then the bus carries that data and uh, then that data is copied into your instruction register okay so uh, all these three things should be uh, if they are same that would be uh, an ideal situation uh, where your memory word size is uh, memory word size equal to your instruction length and it is equal to your bus size okay that would be an ideal condition so let's say uh, let me take one example see if my instruction size is of uh, let's say uh, 64 bits okay so that's uh, actually eight bytes the one word is equal to uh, and in memory also uh, one word is equal to 8 bytes that is 64 bits and your instruction is also 64 bits and your bus size is also 64 bits so what happens is when the instruction gets fetched from your memory 
what happens is the whole instruction can get copied into your bus then that instruction would get copied into your instruction register okay so this is an ideal situation but what if uh, your bus size is less uh, if your memory word is 64 bits your uh, instruction length is also 64 bits but your bus size is only 32 bits then what happens is in one clock cycles in one clock cycle only uh, 32 bits can be fetched from your memory okay so for fetching one instruction only you will need two clock cycles see the processor has to go back again for fetching the remaining instruction okay, please try to understand what i am trying to say so your uh, instruction length should be equal to your bus size and uh, it should also be equal to your uh, memory word, word size word size in memory okay so based on that we can decide the instruction length then next part is allocation of bits uh, which is very important the allocation of uh, different bits in your instruction format it uh, depends upon these following uh, following factors first is number of addressing modes how many different addressing modes you are going to use so uh, we have seen seven different addressing modes for specifying seven different addressing modes you are going to need at least uh, three bits right uh, if you have three bits then you can uniquely identify one uh, uniquely identify every addressing mode next is number of operands um, see let's say we have uh, decided that we have decided that the instruction format should be of 64 bits okay the instruction length is equal to 64 bits now how are we going to allocate these bits okay so for that we are talking about uh, these different factors so let's say uh, that i have assigned um, out of 64 bits uh, let's say 8 bits first 8 bits i mean from uh, i'm talking about from msb okay from left side from left side first uh, 8 bits will be assigned for specifying different opcodes okay then uh, how many bits are remaining now uh, 64 minus 8 is equal to uh, 56 okay so out of 56 again we need three minimum three bits for specifying addressing modes okay so now we have only 53 bits now how are we going to divide these 53 bits Uh, so for dividing those 53 bits again uh, we have to think about how many number of operands are going to be there okay then um, if you have let's say two operands then uh, you have to uh, divide these 53 bits into uh, two fields and you can use these two fields for specifying two different opt-ends. Okay, so if uh, your number of operands is only one, you can allocate all the remaining 53 bits for specifying that operand. Okay, so it depends upon how many number of operands are going to be there in your instruction. Okay, uh, now next point is uh, register versus memory see it's the same thing about uh, it's the same thing like we have just talked about uh, the memory size word and register size memory word size and register size it should be same okay so if your memory word size is 64 bits then your register should also be 64 bits then and then only uh, this will be uh, easier okay 
and uh, the next next point is number of register sets uh, see uh, in our uh, we have talked about different kinds of registers okay instruction register then um, our uh, memory address register uh, program counter register accumulator and uh, io io address register io ar io br mbr okay please try to remember these registers we have talked about these registers see when, uh, when we are talking about these registers there are different kinds of registers okay see if uh, we are using only one register accumulator for uh, all your calculations it's going to be a very tedious task that's why uh, in the later computers more number of registers were introduced that's why uh, it, the re these registers had to be divided into different kinds of sets which can be used for different purposes okay so there there will be few registers who, which will be used for only for storing addresses there will be few registers which will be uh, used for general purposes like uh, storing the fetched operands okay uh, and few registers will be used for only calculating purposes uh, for only uh, storing address purpose okay so this this is the kind of uh, different kinds of register sets which will be there and from that set see let's say if i have divided these registers into uh, different four sets of let's say 10 10 registers okay so i have to specify one set and from that set the specific register right so uh, that's why um, we need to consider about number of register sets okay and uh, based on that we can allocate the number of bits okay so let's say if we have total 40 registers and we have divided these 40 registers into four different register sets okay now let's see how we can decide uh, how we can specify any one register from that so for specifying set we need uh, at least two bits for specifying set we need at least uh, sorry we need at least three bits right because we have different four sets for specifying uh, any one set we need minimum three bits and from one set we are we have again 10 register in each set we have 10 registers so for specifying 10 different registers again we are going to need minimum four bits right so four plus three that would be seven okay so if we have 40 different registers uh, which are divided into four sets okay for that we are going to need minimum uh, seven bits okay i hope you have understood uh, if you don't understand anything please uh, try uh, please contact me through email or phone no problem and uh, we'll we are going to conduct one lecture or uh, an online lecture on in next week in probably on tuesday in the morning and uh, if you have few doubts you can ask them okay uh, so this is a very important part so based on this we are going to allocate these number of bits okay next uh, points are address range and address granularity see uh, address range is also very important um, see what we have been discussing up until now if we have uh, 64 bits of instruction 8 bits we have allocated for uh, specifying the opcode 3 bits we have allocated for uh, specifying the address mode and we have uh, only remaining uh, 53 bits right 
So out of these 53 bits, uh, we, if we divide these 53 bits into, let's say, two fields, then what will be the address range? This can, uh, this area can define. See, uh, if we divide these 53 bits into, uh, let's say, uh, 30 and uh, 23 bits, or uh, let's divide it in, 26 and 27 bits okay so the address range will be different based on the number of bits you are going to use to specify the address uh, see if you have to specify 10 different addresses how many bits you will need try to calculate if you want to specify 10 different addresses you are going to need minimum four bits right uh, see one two four eight uh, please study the binary uh, number system and you will get to know what i'm talking about uh, remember this formula if uh, you have three number of bits you can specify uh, two raised to three different combination of these bits okay if you have four different bit uh, if you have four bits you can specify two raised to four different combinations okay which you can use for different purposes so if you have uh, let's say eight bits you can specify two raised to eight different addresses okay please try to understand where i'm going with this so if uh, you have 16 bits, your address range will be, uh, you can specify 2 raised to 16 different addresses. Okay. Uh, if you have um, 16 bits, you can specify 2 raised to 16 different addresses. Okay. From 0, 0, 1, 2, okay, like that. Continuously. Up to... 2 raised to 16 different addresses. Okay, so this is how the range uh, varies according to your number of bits. Okay, so uh, you need to uh, consider the address range also while uh, allocating the number of bits for uh, any address. And the uh, next part is address granularity. Uh, address granularity means uh, it's about again the same thing that you can see here Here, uh, for addresses that reference memory rather than registers, another factor is granularity of addressing. In a system with 16 or 32 bit words, an address can reference a word or a byte at the designer's choice. Okay, see, uh, the point is uh, what that address defines. Address can be again uh, uh, depends upon how the memory is uh, divided and how the memory is referenced. That that also uh, it also affects uh, allocation of bits. Whether your uh, specified address is uh, going to specify a word or a byte. Okay, that's also important while uh, allocating. The number of bits for each uh, each field in an instruction. Okay, so that is all about uh, allocation of uh, bits.
these uh, it depends upon all these factors and uh, last point is variable length instructions so it uh, this is actually uh, about if uh, in few computers uh, this is this has been used variable length instructions so there won't be a specific instruction format or instruction length uh, it depends upon uh, varying types of instructions okay and uh, this is our last point for today uh, assembly language how it was developed see um, this is about calculation of this simple thing n is equal to i plus j plus k if you want to calculate this um, this polynomial what would be the steps uh, please try to think about it and uh, just think about the uh, steps which will be uh, which we will need to perform uh, see these will be the steps so if you want to uh, calculate this these are ma basic main four steps what happens is load the contents of location 201 into ac add the contents of location 202 to ac ac means accumulator add the contents of location 203 to the ac so what we have done first is uh, see i will be stored in 201 j will be stored in 202 and k is stored in 203 okay so what we have first done is we have first copied uh, contents of 201 into accumulator then we have added uh, contents of 202 to accumulator then we have added contents of 203 to accumulator now we have addition of all these three numbers in your accumulator and what we are doing going to do next is we have to store the uh, contents of ac into location 4 but how will you specify these instructions for that uh, there are different ways if you try to specify these instructions in let's say a binary format so this will be your binary program just imagine you are the programmer and you want to write this program in binary format so this will be this is how your program will look now just try to imagine how many number of zeros and how many number of ones you have to write and uh, you have to remember and if you uh, make one mistake it will be whole different thing right so it is very tedious task to write any kind of program or any kind of number in binary form that's why uh, uh, it was tried to write the same program in binary format see uh, what it is here 2201 that means uh, whatever instructions you are uh, trying to store see this this at these addresses this is these are the contents and these are in hexadecimal format so again it's uh, like we have uh, studied in a earlier uh, in our earlier presentation in our earlier lecture so first few bits will specify the opcode and uh, next few bits will specify the address okay so this is your opcode and this is the address and uh, this opcode is specified by using hexadecimal numbers okay now the same program is specified this is also a little bit difficult by uh, specifying all the instructions in hexadecimal format is also difficult that's why um, it was uh, introduced this symbolic program was introduced load for loading we have different symbol for adding we have different symbol for storing we have different symbol okay so uh, if we are writing a program in symbolic language these are the different symbols for data it was Uh, this symbol b a t okay and after uh, for making this more uh, easier for uh, 
See again, remembering these symbols is also uh, a little bit difficult task for uh, any programmer. That's why an assembly language was uh, introduced. Uh, and remember, in this case, symbolic programs, the programmer has to remember these addresses also. 201, 202, 203, 204. So it is also, again, a little bit difficult for a programmer to remember these kinds of addresses where each and every variable is stored. That's why uh, assembly language was developed and uh, this was uh, actually a revelation. In assembly language, you can specify operands by using letters and uh, we call these actually variables. See, I, J, K, M. So at I location, uh, this variable is stored, this data is stored. At J location, this data is stored. Okay, and uh, this is how uh, the, your program will look. Load I, add J, add K and uh, store n okay so what, whatever the addition will be it will be stored in location n so it is easier to remember for a programmer uh, letters than numbers so this is how uh, assembly language was introduced and um, it is actually very important after uh, the introduction of assembly language, assembly program, the programming task became easier for every program. Okay, uh, we'll stop here for today and uh, we'll see our remaining part in our next lecture. Thank you.